Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Bricks King Podcast, where I'm going to bid your ear about Lego, review those amazing bricks of plastic, and discuss what is new and up and coming around the Lego world. I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's build on it. Welcome in, everybody. How are we doing today? We have a Brick World Chicago interview here for you that took place in Brick World Chicago back last month. And, well... This one's a little bit different. This is not a content creator. This is not a mock builder. This is not somebody that won best in show. This is somebody that actually works for Lego. Somebody that I've gotten to know very well over the years of being an ambassador in the ambassador program and just being on the the LAN, the ambassador network, the the online forum and stuff like that. So this was a, this was a different kind of interview. Last year, if you guys remember, I had the option, option, the opportunity to interview Stuart, who is the Lego house curator in Billund, where he goes around different shows and he takes different mocks and stuff. If you recall last year where we had the lady that did the botanicals, I cannot remember her name, the, her own mocked up botanicals, and they ended up going to the Lego house and they are on display there for a year. And at some point in time, I'm sure she gets them back, which it's been over a year at this point anyway. So it's really, it's really, really cool when I have an opportunity or when you guys have an opportunity to hear from somebody that works at Lego, whether it be a designer or somebody in a different capacity as such as what Sarah is. And you'll, you'll get to hear her story and where her Lego passion comes from and how, how ultimately how you become an employee with a Lego group, because it is definitely not something that happens every single day. You know, it's just a, it's a different, it's a different thing. And it's also another different animal if you have to move to Billund. So you'll hear uh, her journey. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with uh, somebody that I promised on, a, I've, I've teased on a few shows before, Sarah from Lego. We actually have another official formal Lego employee. Last year, um, we had one of the uh, design or de- curators from the um, Lego Lego house? Lego house. Yeah. Lego was house. that Stuart? It was Stuart, yeah, yes. Stuart's great. Stuart was awesome. And he took a lot of stuff from some lady that was here last year and she didn't come back because she doesn't have any more stuff. Oh, I would but hope it's he in the museum now. Back. It's in the museum now. Yeah. Um, anyway, so Sarah, I, I'm so glad you were able to join me when I when you told us that you were going to be coming to Brick Road, I like my mind was blown because, you know, it's it's nice to put a face to the name. I mean, the picture is one thing, but, you know, email communications and stuff like that. So thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Absolutely. So you're here just for a couple days this weekend in Brick Road, Chicago, 2023, in case you guys don't know what year it is. How did, how did you end up here? I mean, obviously you took a plane. Here, yes. I but did how did you end up in this position uh-huh. with where you're currently at with Lego? Well, I joined the Lego group in 2012. I was living out in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I had gotten laid off from my current job, and I, on a whim, applied uh, for a community, online community specialist role at Lego, and they, uh, I got the job somehow. Um, that was working on a website called Lego Rebrick, which was, I think at the time, a social bookmarking website, um, where people could like share Lego builds that they found on Flickr or oh, okay. mock pages. Okay. Those communities that were really big around that time. Um, and we started piloting contests on those we- on that website. Um, and we found that the contests were more popular than the rest of the website. So we decided to relaunch the website as a contest website. Uh, meanwhile, I was also working on Lego Cuso back in the day again. Um, that's, that's, that's a callback right there for some. Yep. <laughs> yep. And that was really taking off and doing really well. Um, and I did a lot of like the tone of voice work there. I would, I would, uh, I don't know, I don't think they still do this, but I would personally write like the, you reached 5,000 supporters like message oh, okay. and try to throw in as many like cute tidbits. If it was an IP or something, okay. I'd try to be like, you know, I don't know, faster than a speeding bullet. Did this reach 5,000? <laughs> you know, the Superman reached 5,000 okay. or something like that. Um, and gosh, I can't remember if it was Lego Kusa or Lego Ideas. 
that launched um, that had the Ghostbusters set. But I did get to announce that. Awesome. Um, so I was working on those things. And what's funny is actually um, I met my husband on a blind date. And to set that up, the ind- individual who set us up actually sent him that video of me announcing the Ghostbusters <laughs> set. So that the that 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 won me a husband, ladies. Um, See, so Lego does have a purpose other than <laughs> just a hobby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, and then we got to the point where we kind of realized that Lego Rebrick um, having the contest actually would make good sense to merge with Lego Ideas. Um, so I kind of helped transition that. And I moved on to the Lego Ambassador Network. Um, and at the time, I focused on a bunch of different areas, just general engagement on the site, and gradually moved into this role of working with uh, Lego Fan Media, which I think might be my most exciting area. But that's my unbiased, or my biased opinion. <laughs> um, and it's been really great. Well, um, first off, it's really cool that you were in on the kind of the bottom end of the ideas platform when it was Kuso. Yeah. If those of you that are listening don't know, ideas is what Kuso was, but now it's obviously much more grand and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, but so you're with the Lego group now. You're in the uh, ambassador network, mm-hmm. big time yeah. role person. How, how do you, how do you, cause you've been around for a while, a, a little bit. How have you seen the land grown in, obviously it's grown, but how have you seen it grow for like the, uh, just the build up for, I guess the community in general, not, not just ambassadors, but how it's kind of helped with Lego grow. I don't know if yeah. you, if you guys can see that from your side or not, because there's a lot of ambassadors. Yeah. Well, first off, I want to get a business card that I'm the big time Lego <laughs> role person because that sounds a lot better than engagement manager. I don't honestly. know that that'll fit on a little placard yeah, on your desk, though. Probably not, no. Um, but, you know, it's been interesting watching the community grow. I think that, you know, you can even say that at an event like this, you see a, a lot different types of people, a lot more diversity here than in previous years when I started in the company. Um, and that Lego is becoming kind of cool um like i was i was talking to a colleague and i'm like i can't tell if there's like more young adults here or if they're all just dressed like a lot hipper (laughs) than they were when you know i joined the company yeah um and i think that a lot of that has been you know obviously we are making these adult focused sets but also you know people like you and like other like lego fan media that are Mm -hmm. kind of representing this to a younger audience um, I've also seen that, you know, back in the day, it seemed like a typically had to be mockers, right? They yeah. had to build. Yeah. And now that's definitely not the case. Like, you don't need to be a builder to be an a You can collect and you can display and you can make jewelry if you want yeah. to. Or wear the jackets <laughs> or wear the shoes. So I think I think all of that's great. It's it's really, you had mentioned about, you don't know whether it's a younger group or yeah. not. It is definitely, it is definitely not for the, you know, the whole stereotype of you live in your mom's basement. And that, yeah. Those days are gone. Yeah. I, maybe there may still be a, some people that don't want to, you know, share their stuff. But like you said, there's people that make jewelry and there's somebody, I don't know if you've seen it. There's somebody that made like a, some kind of gown yep. out of Lego. I, I, was, see that, yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, I've never seen anything like this before. Mm-hmm. So you've got. That's I guess that's beyond a wearable. Yeah. Um, but you had mentioned kind of how, you know, reaching different audiences and stuff. You have people that collect and whatever. I know that um, Lego has had more of a push recently, I say recently, here in the last few years, towards uh, more of a social media presence. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's more people that are applying to the land and are becoming land members, ambassadors, that are, you know, in TikTok and Instagram yep. and stuff like that. So how is... How's that kind of transformed things? Because originally I wouldn't think Lego would be interested in like a TikToker, but I guess, you know, there's a lot of eyes and yeah. ears that are. Well, it's all about reaching new audiences, right? And I think that with a lot of like, the nice thing about fan media is it's very easy to kind of share the results of that, of like, you know, the majestic, like the majestic horse for St. Patrick's sure. Day. Or not St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> April Fool's. Um, that it's a lot easy to say, hey, we did this, and it generated this much reach yeah. and, you know, this much social currency. However, that's calculated. I'm not sure. We I don't a, know. I've heard that before, yeah, and I don't know. Yeah. 
you know, um, these type of, yeah, these type of campaigns. Uh, Lego's also been a lot more interested in user-generated content lately, too, because that actually performs better on their social channels than stuff they make, right? Right. So they do a lot more stuff with, like, brick uh, photographers. Sure. Yeah, and stuff like that. Um, but it has been great to see this kind of rise of fan media. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so with your role... And there's there's obviously a number of you that are in the um, the ambassador network that help run that entire behemoth. There's days where I feel like it's it's a never ending hole. Yeah. <laughs> you go down a, a rabbit hole. How because you live in the United States, mm-hmm. obviously there's some others that live in Billund and stuff like that. How does that how does that affect you? Because I mean, you're on the East Coast, I'm in the Central Time Zone, yeah. and I know there are times where I'm like, oh my God, this is at five o'clock in the morning, my time. How, how does that work with your with your daily schedule, your daily work schedule, when they're like, Sarah from Lego, we need you on yeah. this call. I'm sorry, it's at four o'clock in the morning. Well, I typically say no to the 4 a.m. <laughs> That's the nice thing about having colleagues in Billen, because I'd be like, have you met my friend Jordan? Um, you know, he can take the call because he's in Denmark. Um, I do start my days relatively early. Like, I've had calls at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. before. Um, and that, you know, I uh, it's not my favorite thing to do, but it can be done, um, certainly. Yeah. So uh, well, the, nice, the, the nice thing is that we do get coverage in, you know, multiple time zones. So, like, they leave and I'm able to, you know, make sure there's no fires that appear <laughs> in the evening or more or less. It always, sure. it does seem like leaks always come, like, at 4.30 Eastern time on a Friday. I feel like that is like... Like in in PM? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like PM. And then I'm like, hello, Denmark, please respond Somebody to me. get out of bed. Yeah. Oh, get, my gosh. Get out of bed. Get, you know, stop relaxing and tell me, you know, what we can do about this sort of thing. So you bring up an interesting point here. So leaks mm-hmm. are... Uh, le- I mean, people like leaks. People yeah. like to know before they know. Mm-hmm. So... It seems like it seems like things have kind of yeah. slowed for a little. Yeah. I, I, I think the Lego Group has done much better at sending out those yeah. lawyer letters. It <laughs> says stop it now. Yeah. Uh, so how how does that affect you guys? Like, is that one of those things where you just beat your head against the wall and you're like, oh god, not again? Yeah. Like, h- how do you guys go about not officially handling it, but how do you? How do you deal with that in your head of like, okay, now I've got to figure out where this is coming from, or do you just, you hand it over and say, I'm done with it? I think that leaks have changed a lot, and it makes me sound like an old timer, because it's like, oh, the internet has changed leaks. (laughs) But really, I feel like even like five years ago, leaks were not the way they are now, where it's like an image gets posted, and suddenly it's everywhere now. Um, And that, I feel like, didn't used to be the case. So we did have to kind of change our guidelines on leaks. Um, to, you know, cover, you know, differentiate between fact based rumors and, sure. and real leaks. I think that a lot of times we have internal classification de- deemed on how, like, sensitive an IP is. Oh, yes. It's usually related to that. So, like, you know, not all leaks are created equal, yeah. I guess is what I will say. Some leaks are more. So it really depends, right? Because if there's an IP partner involved, that can usually, you know, create some damage between our brand and that IP sure. partner. Yeah. I, well, I, you're talking about IP, and I'm thinking right now, like, Mario or Disney, like, yeah. or Nintendo, I guess, is the parent company. Like, those are big, mm-hmm. big-time deals, and, you know, Star Wars fans are out there, and they want to know way beforehand, and it yeah. always seems to be like Star Wars is one of those things that gets leaked. So I understand the damaging of a brand and a relationship and stuff like that, and that's the last thing that you, as, a, as an employee of a company mm-hmm. and, you know, the IP partner would want, so... Um, so your role right now, do you have, and you can, you, you can choose not to answer this and that is 100% fine. Do you have any like desire of, you know, like moving to a different position within the Lego group and maybe even ultimately end up in Billund or, cause I know you have family here and, um, as is that if you want to share or if you can share, I, so I prefer, you know, I, I think the, uh, the time in my life when I would have relocated to Billin has passed. I don't think I, I would particularly want to do that, you know. And I, I do have I do have family here, and that is yeah. you know, something that's important to me. I, I think Lego is a great company. Yeah, absolutely. They um, they definitely seem like I was listening to a podcast on my 15 hour drive up here, and they were talking about um, 
companies, obviously, people need their money. They need, you know, their benefits and stuff like that. And then the other thing was how do you handle, like, flexibility with situations and stuff like that. And it seems, based on talking to different employees and, and people that are former employees that were designers and such, that there's a lot of flexibility. It's not just this big evil conglomerate. It's this, uh, it's this partnership that kind of coalesces between the employees and the main group there if it seems like a big kind of like a family like a family vibe to the company i don't i don't know if you can speak to that or absolutely you feel that family vibe yeah it's a very family friendly company um you know for example um maternity leave they recently made it globally that um all all uh Parents, I'm trying to think of the right word because it's also, I think it also applies to people who adopt as well. Caregivers? Caregivers. Caregivers. Primary caregivers would get six months uh, paid leave, which in the U.S. is pretty unheard of. Yeah. Um, So when I had my daughter, I did get to stay home for six months and not have to, you know, worry about my job or things like that. And I'd spend that time focusing on her and bonding with her. Right. Um, And just things like that, you know. Um, And there is a lot of flexibility for work-life balance, flexibility for, ah, I got to pick up my kid or take my kid to the doctor, sure. things like that, um, that I'm really appreciative of. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is, that is awesome. So while you're here in Chicago, mm-hmm. um, how, how have you enjoyed, have, are you, do you, have you been to Chicago before? Have you been to this region before? I've been to Brickworld several you times. You have. Okay. Have. So how does, Obviously, this year hasn't really kicked off because yeah. tomorrow is the opening day. Mm. But how 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 have you seen a difference between this year versus years past when you've been here? Hmm. Well, I think it's kind of, again, what I was talking about a bit more with, like, the more T-folds, potentially greater yeah. diversity. Um, you know, everybody that I, you know, I, it's not really a change from last year but or last time I was here. Yeah. But everyone has been super nice, super happy which is nice (laughs) i mean i still have that lego discussion later so maybe i'll it'll be the airing of the grievances then but everyone i've talked to has been overwhelmingly just you know pleased with Mm -hmm. like their relationship with lego which makes me so so happy obviously uh better than the alternative um but you know i think that it's a bit different from when i've been here before because my main goal purpose this year is building the relationships too so sure. i've been taking a lot more time to sit and talk with people like this not always recorded though <laughs> this is for uh government purposes <laughs> oh i see i see <laughs> no um that, that is that is interesting I, I came last year and it was obviously post-covid and it was mm-hmm. the first big big show that really kind of kicked off and um you know i've talked to a lot of people here last year and then um, that were also at um, a brick rodeo down in Texas near me, and they just, as much as people love brick rodeo, they're like, it's just, it just doesn't compare to Brick World. And I don't know if it's because it's like a central hub. Yeah. You know, the the East Coast people, the Southern people, the West Coast people. I mean, there's a lot of people from, like Oregon, from California, yeah. Washington area that go to Bricks Cascade and stuff. So. Yeah, it is a very well-known event, and it's very, it's like a, I would say, comfortable event, because you have the hotel right there, and you've got these conference rooms right here, and there's, they had, I was really impressed they had food trucks. I'm like, this is great. Um, I don't have to worry about figuring (laughs) out food. I can just walk outside and stay there. Yep. Yeah. They've really... There's there's a lot more sponsors and yeah. stuff. And this there's year, a, but there's the app. Like there the is app the is app. so yes. helpful. <laughs> um, yeah. So you work for the Lego Group, mm-hmm. like one of the coolest companies in the world to work for. I mean, every child wants to grow <laughs> up and work for Lego at some point in time. Um, do you have a Lego journey prior to your formal? Well, I had the um, when I was a kid, I had the Paradiesel sets. Um, Am I saying that right? I, I think so. Yeah. I'm going to go with yes. Yeah. Um, that were, you know, the, like, swimsuits and, yeah. like, parrots yeah. and, like, swimming pools. Um, and then, but those were the sets people would buy for me. The sets I wanted were my brothers that were the the, uh, the pirate ones. Oh, okay. So, like, probably, like, me and my brother were very, very close in age, and we were always fighting, except <laughs> when we were digging through <laughs> Lego bin. To find, you know, the right, the right piece that sure. we need for something. Then we'd be, you know, playing together. Um, and then, of course, you know, I did fall out of it as I got older. 
Um, I think I, I think I did end up like as a young adult, I bought some like Star Wars sets because I wanted like the minifigures. Sure. Um, and then you know when I applied for Lego, they were like, "How many years experience do you have in all these topics?" And they were like, "Building with Lego." And I'm like, you know, I've got like. <laughs> 25 years of experience or something, right? Probably not with three, you yeah. know. Of not, not necessarily realizing at the time yeah. that there were people like this, right? So I'm sure they get that a lot, though. Yeah. Um, or maybe less so now. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So you, you used to fight, obviously, with your brother until everybody's digging into yeah. the Lego bin. Yeah. And you wanted his pirate stuff back yeah. when. And so right now, Lego has done a... my. We talked about it a little bit ago, uh, earlier, about how they've really reached to A-Falls. Now you've got so many different things that come out every month, and then I hear a lot of the groan, oh, my God, my my wallet, oh, my piggy bank. Right now, anything between the time you started, let's say, in the Ambassador Network and then up until current day today, what, what would you, if, if you were, you know, hey, I'm going to take this money out of my paycheck right now. And I'm going to go get something for me, for you, not for me. <laughs> what would it be? That's a really tough question. Uh, it's the one I always like to end on. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, well, the answer I would give you, I can't give you because it's under embargo. See? Um. <laughs> that's a, and that's what I was going to say. I was going to put in there that you're allowed to speak of. So, yeah. Um, um, it's you'll hopefully get the press kit for that soon um but yeah i do love the minifigures how about that i used to buy every series and i would put them on my desk i've kind of fallen off of doing that i think actually was covid was the problem because i used to go in the store oh yeah and it's it's really funny because like there'd be like a a minifigure swapping like spreadsheet for like the entire company well the entire enfield company sure of like, who needs, like, Huey from, you know, oh, uh, yeah. willing to trade, you know, X, Y, and Z for it. Because um, they don't let you feel them in the store, um, in the Lego store, at in the Enfield office. We have a store in the office. Um, of course you of do. Course Why we wouldn't do. you? Of course we do. Um, yeah. But um, so you could exchange that way. I did love, I do love the minifigures. They're, awesome. They're my favorites. Well, so. very, very cool. Uh, last question before we go. Somebody that may be interested in joining the Ambassador Network, I've talked to new ambassadors and people that aren't any longer in the Ambassador Network for whatever reason, their own choice or whatever. Um, They've moved on to other things in their life. What is one thing that you would, one piece of advice that you would give to them to be like, if you're looking into it, Mm -hmm. here's what you should know. Hmm. Well, we like to say the Lego Ambassador Network is kind of the cherry on top. Right. It's not necessarily like you don't you can have like a channel and not be yeah. recognized. And there's there's nothing wrong with that. You know, the, the recognition program isn't isn't for everybody. Obviously, yeah. you know, we do have we do offer a lot of a lot of things through the recognition program. But of course, like, you know, not everybody is going to, to gravitate towards that. Um, you know, you can't expect us to send you like, you know, every set yeah. for review. Right. Yeah. Some people might assume that every set. That right. we send it to you so that's not you know necessarily the case or that you'll be having having a phone call with the lego ceo the next day or things like yeah. that given your set idea no absolutely not but that being said i think it's a great program and you know it is something that you know we're happy to offer by all means well and like yeah. you said it, it doesn't need to be the i need to do this so that i can yeah like you said it it could be the cherry on top of yeah. your channel and i've talked to n- I like to consider them as artists, people that do mm-hmm. YouTube or yeah. Instagram or whatever. Some like, yeah, I, I don't really want to do that. Yeah. And th- that's fine. Mm-hmm. I, I am always curious. Do you know about it? Yeah. Have you thought about it? Yes, I know about it. No, I don't really want to do it. That being said, so. there's a couple people here that I've, I've seen and I've been like, I'd really like that person to be part of our, <laughs> our community. You part know? of the group. We are looking part of the, for yeah. um, people who are creative or yeah. reaching different audiences or doing different things in that way it's not it's not all about size obviously we want you to have you know a certain threshold of followers um and that would vary based on what platform you're on yeah i can't really like shout out a number to that no and and i wouldn't expect you to nor would i share that with any of you no 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 you don't get that no um (laughs) Because every every platform is different, yeah. You know, and I and I completely understand that. You know, TikTok is different than YouTube, and yeah. YouTube is different than a podcast mm-hmm. or a blog, or yeah. You know, so. Um, but like you said, really, just kind of find your passion, what makes you happy, and then if you go for it, you go for it. And if it happens, yeah. it happens. If not, don't give yeah, up. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. It's not no. the end of the world. So, um, Sarah, thank you for 
I just realized we, I'm pushing even longer. I just can't stop talking to you. That's fine. Um, I appreciate you coming on today and um, sharing your story and, and where you are to where you've gotten to be. And I, I can't wait to hopefully see you at another event. And going to Scareback? I don't know. When okay. is when is Scareback? End of September, right before Fan Media Days. Maybe. Yeah, I think it's like the twenty third. I have to talk to my wife about that <laughs> one. <laughs> anyway, so um, again, Sarah, thank you so much for coming on, and um, we'll hopefully cross paths again in the future soon. Okay, sounds Thanks, Sarah. good. Well, I have to say I greatly appreciate Sarah taking the time. I believe it was on that Saturday, the actual first day of Brick World Chicago for the public before the public came in there. You could hear the background, you know, the ambiance. It wasn't near as much just because the doors had not opened. It was like 8.30 in the morning or something like that. However, Sarah, thank you so much for taking an opportunity to sit down and chat. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you gleaned something from it or you just overall just enjoyed listening to somebody different chat about Lego from a different perspective, a different side of things overall. So that's going to wrap up the episode. Stay tuned for the next one because... We do have the Lego Corvette with a guest host, believe it or not. No, it's not Tom Jurassic. So until we meet again, I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's build on it.